Hi folks, welcome back. This is a lecture about that fourth essay on the syllabus, the Evaluation Project. Now this is a fairly straightforward essay, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page as, and you know exactly what I expect from you, and hopefully I'll be able to give you some advice here in case you get stuck or <laughs> get the old writer's block. Okay, first of all, what is an evaluation? It's basically an opinion uh, about uh, some question. So, there's all situations in life or at the job where you have to make a decision or somebody else has to make a decision and you want to make a well-informed decision. You don't want to just guess or pick something at random. So for example, what car should I buy? It's a pretty big choice for a lot of us. Uh, you don't want to just go to a car lot and buy the first thing that you see. Uh, instead, you want to do some research and come up with a, uh, a reason uh, why that particular car is the best. Which university should you attend? Another good example. Or uh, later on, when you graduate and get a job, uh, you might have to write an evaluation of uh, yourself or a colleague about, you know, do they deserve promotion? You know, this is a, a pretty big deal, right? So it's, it pays to know a little bit about how to come up with an opinion and then how to support it with good evidence. Now, an evaluation is not just an opinion. It's not a personal opinion. It's not a, a guess. You know, it's some kind of informed uh, for informed opinion is really the best way to think about it. <clears throat> so if you just said, I'm a great employee because, uh, I don't know, I just am. Well, you know, you haven't given any evidence to support that claim that you're a good employee, so you'll probably get passed over for promotion. That's the best you can come up with. Uh, that movie was great because uh, I just thought it was great. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, you haven't supplied any reasons. There's no reason for the reader or audience to take you seriously. Now, if you want to make an evaluation, you have to have some reasoned arguments to support that opinion. So, to do that, we need what's called criteria. And this just means the standards of judgment, the factors that you'll be taking into, into consideration, how you rank those factors in terms of importance, and then what constitutes good and bad in each of your criterion. Uh, so, for example, if you're looking at vehicles again, uh, you might look at gas mileage, acceleration, uh, warranty coverage, safety reports. So which of those factors means the most to you? It's probably going to depend on your status, right? If you're a parent buying a car for a 16-year-old child, you probably put safety right up at the top of the list, probably cost up there. Um, however, if you're the child, you'll probably put the looks of the car up at the top. So, you know, it depends on, you know, the audience and what they are looking for. Also, what's considered good and what's considered bad. Uh, what the 16-year-old might think his car looks great, uh, the parent might look at it and say, well, that doesn't look you know, very good at all. You know, shouldn't you get a truck instead or, or whatever. Um, same thing with colleges. Uh, costs might be the only thing that matters. Uh, you know, if you can't afford to go there, you can't afford to go. So, you know, take it off the table. Um, other factors, though, you know, how far is it from home? Now, maybe you're okay with being further away. Um, how many teachers are there per students? <clears throat> All of these are factors that will change depending on the, what, you know, who's using the information and what they, how they rank them. It's kind of important when you're looking at a list of the top colleges, you know, what criteria do they use? Maybe you don't share those same judgments, so it's important to know that. Now, if you're looking at movies, people usually talk about the acting, the story, the special effects. Uh, less common, you might look at the costumes, the, uh, the set designs. Uh, the directing, you know, the Quentin Tarantino movie is a lot different uh, than a Sam Raimi movie, uh, for example, or a Spielberg movie. You know, each of these directors has a, I guess, a unique style uh, that's really evident if you watch their, their films. And you can talk about that as one of your criteria. Uh, there's also soundtracks. You know, the music of the movie can make a huge difference. If you don't believe me, try watching a, one of your favorite movies without the sound on. You'll see right away how big of a difference that music and uh, sound makes to the uh, film. Uh, if you're looking at games, uh, again, you could talk about the story of the game. You know, if it's a game that has uh, a story component, you look at the graphics, the artwork, the sound quality, the music, uh, the gameplay. You know, how do you actually play the game? What are the rules? Uh, you can evaluate that. Uh, replay value. So is it the kind of game you play once and never play it again? Or do you play it for, you know, again and again for years? You know, that could be a big difference, right? Now those, there, there are plenty of other criteria you can look at 
just giving you a few to get you started. So then it's time to write your thesis statement. And I've got a rough template here for you to follow. You don't have to follow this thing exactly, okay? But it's an idea to get you started to think about your structure. So movie title, whatever it is, is a good or poor movie uh, because it criterion one, criterion two, criterion three. So let's, uh, that's the template. Let's plug some stuff in there so you can see what this looks like. Army of Darkness is a great movie because it has good special effects, a hilarious script, and the brilliant acting of Bruce Campbell. So I picked out three things from that movie that I want to talk about in my evaluation. So I've supplied you with the criterion, the criteria that I think are most, in, most significant in the film. Uh, a Beautiful Mind, that's a great movie because it has a deeply moving story, an award-winning soundtrack, and a wonderful performance by Russell Crowe. So you see again there, I've picked out those uh, criteria that I want to talk about, and I've said, you know, they're good, uh, very representative of excellence in their uh, areas. Okay, so you probably got a pretty good idea of movie reviews. Hopefully you've read some. I've got some sites you can look at if you're not familiar with the format, but uh, most of us have read uh, reviews of things before. You know what to, to expect. Okay, some potential problems uh, that I've had uh, with students in the past over this um, assignment. Uh, well, I'll talk about each one, but just briefly right now, there's too much summarizing. That's probably the most common. Uh, and then second, secondly, not enough detail in there. And then thirdly, not enough actual criticism. So let's take a look at each one of these. Okay, over summarizing. Did you spend too much time summarizing? Spoiler alert! You know, you've probably heard this term. There's no reason to spoil the movie. Uh, there's no reason to tell the reader everything that happens in the film. You don't need to know all that to decide whether or not it's something you want to see or not. So really, this is the question. If you're writing a movie review, if you're reading a movie review, okay, let's back up. <laughs> so what's the reason that you're reading that review of a movie? It's to decide whether or not it's a movie that you would like to go see. So you need some information to help you find that out. Now, if I tell you everything that happens in the movie, that's actually going to do, uh, give you a reason not to go see it because I've already spoiled it for you. So you don't want to spend too much time summarizing the thing. On the other hand, you have to have enough information to know basically what the movie is about. You need to know the gist of it, just not enough that it's going to, to spoil the movie for you. So usually what I advise is uh, maybe one paragraph or even shorter than that um, about the movie as a whole, what, what's, what it's about basically, uh, maybe a key event or two, but definitely do not spoil anything uh, that's critical uh, that would diminish the viewer's pleasure if uh, he or she already knew that going in. So again, I'm going to keep saying this again and again, but if you want some examples, uh, go look at that Real, uh, Real Views site. I have a link to that posted here. Also, Roger, Roger Ebert is uh, probably the world's most famous movie critic, and a lot of his reviews are online. You can read those, and I try to get a feel for how much summary is okay and uh, where it gets, you know, violates and starts to get into that uh, spoiler zone. Okay, so I'm not, you need to have details in the paper, and basically the details you're providing are reasons to back up the generalizations that you make. So a generalization is something like, the special effects were great. Now I've said something, I made a claim, but it's a very general claim. You know, I haven't told you what kind of special effects were in the film. I haven't told you uh, what was great about them. I haven't described them in any way. Uh, so that's a very general statement. It's okay to have those in there, but I have to remember to support them with some examples, some supporting details. So uh, the special effects were great. For example, the T-1000's morphing ability was done with high-end computer graphics that were revolutionary at the time. So that's a good example. You know, I could even elaborate that some more, talk about the type of computers, maybe describe that morphing effect a little bit more. And that would be, you know, really great for the review because the uh, reader may not even know what the heck I'm talking about, morphing ability. Uh, you know, so I could expand that. And that's, you know, a good place to expand. I always like to have lots of examples to support all my points. Okay, and then lastly, we have the criticism. So, you know, you, know, they, you can interpret this in a couple different ways. Uh, one is, you do want to say a few negative things. If the movie has some negative points about it, even though it's your favorite movie, um, the reader wants you to be objective, right? So, not just pretend like it's the most perfect, you know, best 
bestest, <laughs> bestest, bestest, bestest movie. It's your best friend, like you, uh, you know the director personally or something like that. So we always want to see him a little bit, you know, if it's got some flaws, you know, go ahead and point out the flaws somewhere. Uh, don't just be over the top positive, no matter how much you like the movie. But really, though, what I'm trying to get at with this criticism is thinking intelligently and doing some analysis, some critical analysis of the film. Um, so, for example, if you said Office Space had a great soundtrack. Well, again, that's a generalization. Uh, you need to unpack that a little bit and talk about, well, what was on the soundtrack, uh, what was so great about it. But look at what James Berardinelli does here with this. So he says, the Office Space soundtrack boasts an interesting selection of gangster rap numbers. This music sets up an interesting visual audio dichotomy between the impotent white collar workers struggling feebly against the establishment and the violent language and attitude of the streets. So that's just kind of a thought that uh, Berard and Nelly had writing that review. And it really shows, you know, he's a really smart guy. He's really thought about the film. He's analyzed even down to the, the soundtrack and what that might mean, you know, for the rest of the movie. So I really like to see that kind of thought applied to the review. So you're really thinking about the movie and thinking about how it all uh, fits together, the message the director's trying to get across and all that sort of thing. All right, so five final tips for your review. Uh, one, don't assume the reader has seen the movie. I get this sometimes. Uh, this, you know, you might start off your essay saying, well, for this assignment, I chose to look at this movie. Well, don't write it like that. I mean, don't assume you're writing a real movie review. It's going to be published on a website somewhere, let's say. Not just an assignment for a class where everybody knows that it's an assignment and they know what, what's in the assignment and so on. <clears throat> so you might have to describe the movie and describe the scenes in the movie at least enough so that the reader will know what you're talking about. Uh, so too, we've mentioned this before, but again, uh, don't summarize the whole film. Uh, if you want to talk about a few individual scenes, hey, that's fine. Uh, so just pick a couple of scenes maybe, uh, flesh them out in detail, uh, but don't go do the whole, you know, the movie opens with this happening, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. You know, don't do that. Okay, three, watch the movie and the key scenes repeatedly. So, movie, game, whatever, it needs to be something you're really familiar with, you've watched or experienced many times. Uh, don't just try to work from memory, because you'll almost always make mistakes that way. Uh, four, if it's a movie and you have it on a DVD, it might have director's commentary tracks. Or if it's not, if you don't have it, you might be able to find this online somewhere. You know, I haven't actually checked, but you might check YouTube to see if you can find it. Uh, but anyway, it's really nice when you can listen to this commentary because it's basically the people who made the film talking about the process. So you can learn a whole lot of behind the scenes stuff that will really be useful for your review. Um, five, read other reviews. Uh, this is really good advice. If you, especially if the movie's been out for a while, uh, you can find reviews of it if you go to the site Metacritic or you can go to uh, Rotten Tomatoes, I believe is the name of that. Or you can just go to Google and type in the name of the movie and look for reviews. You know, and look and see what other people have said about the movie, what they liked, what they didn't like. Now, you don't have to agree with the critics, <laughs> you know, but it will give you some ideas about things to write about in your own review. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. <clears throat> if you do have uh, questions about the assignment, please don't hesitate to ask. You can ask on Canvas or here on YouTube. And good luck with your evaluations.